Hey guys, this is Fly Games. We're back with another video tutorial on how to create a 2D room escape game. So in this tutorial, it's time for us to start scripting. But before we do that, we need to fix a little issue here. So if I am to zoom here in this wall one sprite, you can see that there is some nodes. You see these gray pixels? Yeah, those are not supposed to be here. So we need to fix that. Uh, I'm going to go wall one and in the import settings, you need to check this override for PC and in this format I am going to change it to HBA 32 bit. Hit apply and you see now it's all clear. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, you can see that this sprite and all of my sprites are pretty low resolution. I think it was it was yeah, it was 64 to 400 pixel size canvas. But we can live with that. So just go to all the walls and change this so you have a better resolution of the image. Okay. So now that we fix that, we are ready to start scripting. So, without wasting any more of your time, let's get into it. So, create a folder and call it Scripts. And within the folder, I'm going to create a C -sharp script and I'm going to call it Display Image. Open Visual Studio. Let's see how long we're going to wait. Okay. Great. So now I'm going to delete all this and I'm going to create a private in current current wall. And this will be the number of the wall we are currently at. For example, if we are on full one, this variable will be one. And uh, I want to change this variable according to the number of the wall we're at. But the walls are only for 1 to 4, right? So I just go like crazy and play with the sound of these numbers how much I want to. So I'm going to create a public property. Current wall with a gap dot. And for the get return current wall, the private instance of the current wall. And now for the set, see what I'm going to do here. If value, value is the current value that we're passing whenever we're setting this variable, this property. If value equals 5, then current wall equals 1. So if we're at wall 4 and we want to increase the wall number, that means we are clicking the right arrow, we don't want to go to wall 5 because there isn't wall 5. So we're going to go to, current, to wall 1 again. So current wall equals 1. Else if value equals 0, that means we are at current wall 1 and we're going to go to current wall 4 by clicking the left arrow. Current wall equals equals 4 else else current wall equals value. We do not have no problem here. So that's it for the current wall. Look what I'm going to do now. Private int previous wall because I want to know what the previous wall was and you're going to see why in a sec. Vote start and uh, 
previous wall, I'm going to set it to 0. And current wall, I'm going to set it to 1. Because this will be the default wall when the game starts. For update. And I will check in every frame if the current wall the current wall is not equal to previous wall. And if that happens, what, uh, what, 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 Pre previous wall, okay? And if that happens, I'm going to do something here, but, and in the end, previous wall equals current wall. So, if the current wall is not equal to previous wall, that means that we change it, we, we change it in some way. For example, we hit the button. So, Get component sprite render sprite render. If the current wall is not equal to the previous wall, I'm going to change the sprite of the display image. So resources and I'm going to create this folder in a while. Load. I want to load a sprite and it will be in a sprite folder wall. And pass the current wall that we're at to string. Now I could do this in every frame, in every update, but that would be a useless job for the CPU because we don't need to upload to load the sprite of the current wall every time. We'll need to load it whenever the current wall changes. So that's why we're using this previous wall here. So jump back into Unity. I'm going to create the resources folder. Resources. And then that it's that resources. I'm going to create a sprite folder. And here I'm just going to pass all all of the walls. Then Okay. Okay. So I now have all walls here, and uh, now I need to create a script that will allow me to navigate. So button handler. That's how I'm going to call it. Button handler. And here, first of all, I want. A, I want a display image current display current display it's private but de by default but I'm going to just call it private so in start method in start this current display is game object dot find find display image get component display image very simple so now I have the current display in this class and I only need two functions one for the right arrow and one for the left arrow so public void on right click arrow this will be when we click the right arrow I want the current display the current wall and I want to increase it by 1 because when we click the right arrow we're increasing the wall by 1 so if we are on wall 1 we go to wall 2 and if we are on wall 4 and we're increasing by 1, that's okay because we'll go to wall 1 again according to this setter here. So for the left arrow, on left click arrow, current display, yeah, I'm just going to copy this, minus 1. And we also have no problem here because we have this setter. So now this might work 
I think we're ready to test this. So for the canvas, I want to pass the button handler in the canvas and button right on click pass the canvas button handler on right click arrow and button left pass the canvas button handler on left click arrow so I think this will work let's test that out So it doesn't work. Okay, so there were two reasons uh, this didn't work, and we have uh, these arrows that get got smaller, and that's because I forgot to set the scale mode to scale with screen size. Because when I hit maximize on play, the screen size changes, and you have to set, to set the canvas scaler to this mode in order to not get a distortion of the size so first of all I did that and of course now that I did that I need to resize this and put it in the correct place let's say 70 to 70 yeah that works and also this 70 to 70 I want the same Y for this and the mirror X so that okay so we're good with that and I also forgot to place the component here display image so now I hit play you see that whoop we can change between the rooms, go back and forward and no problems with getting out of bounds. So that's how we can navigate. Next what we're going to do is we want some points that we can zoom at. For example, I want this drawer to be able to zoom and then open it. But first I want to zoom before I open it. I don't want to just from the default display I don't want to just click here and open the drawer I first want to zoom in and then be able to open it so generally uh, I also for example want to display maps uh, have it here if I place wall 2 where is the sprite renderer? here I also will want to zoom in here so I can see this number if you can see it's like a scar okay so I'm going to do that now script create the script and I call it interact and you'll see what I'm going to do here uh, first of all, I want, like before, private display image display, current display. Yeah, this, this variable, I will need it in a lot of occasions. So, I'm going to initialize this current display equals scheme object find display image get component display image okay so interact I want to interact with some objects in the room that I'm going to set later but for all of them I am going to have an interface which is going to be called uh, wait, uh, class interface, and I'm going to call that I interactable. Interactable. So 
all the interactable objects will inherit from this interface and I will be able to interact with every one of them. So I only need the void interact and this interact is going to take a display image. Display image current current display. Great. So in the update method I'm going to check if the left click is been pressed. So input get mouse button down zero that stands for the left click because this is a click to play game and I am going to use the mouse almost exclusively to play this game. So if that happens, if that happens, I'm going to raycast. So vector to ray position. So the ray starts from the from the camera screen to world point input mouse position. So the the ray that I want to cast st starts from the position that the mouse is currently at, and it's going from the camera to the display image. So raycast hit to D because this is a 2D game. I'm going to call it just hit equals physics to be regast and the first argument is the origin that's the ray position the direction will be zero because I just want to go directly from the camera to the main image and I'm going to set a distance of 100 that's a random value I assume. So if hit if hit if the ray hit it a game object and that will happen only if the game object has a collider attached to it. If hit and if hit transform tag equals to a tag that will I will put right now that will call, will be called interactable interactable so if that happens I will simply call hit the transform get component I interactable interact so if Ray hits an uh, interactable object uh, of course I'm going to pass uh, the can display because I want to use this. So if we hit, if the ray hits a uh, interactable object, object, I'm going to interact with, and every interactable object will have a different interact function. So first of all, let's let's create that tag. Let's create that tag. Actually, I want. To tag this with a capital so interactable and here too Whoop. interact with capital okay so I want to create a zoom in object so script add class zoom in object and that is an object that I can click and zoom in in the, in the specific point zoom in object so what do I need using unity engine using system collections ok pop pop up Okay. 
source in here is from Mono and from I interactable because this is an interactable object. Of course, I need to implement an interact function in order to make this work. And within interact, I have the current display, the reference to the current display game object. So this will be pretty easy to make this work. I just want to zoom in in the specific point that I'm clicking. So first of all, public float zoom radio. I don't know exactly how much am I zooming. I need to test this. So for starters, I will put 0.5. I think this will work. Okay, so when I interact, I want the camera the camera, the main camera, uh, the, the orthographic size, I want to scale it by a factor of zoom radio. And also the camera main transform position, it will be very simply new vector 3 this transform, this game object that I am interacting, this zoom in game object, you will see in a second what I mean. Uh, this transform position x, this transform position y, and I don't need to change the. I don't need to change the z. So here, camera main transform position Z. Yeah, that is all I need now. Let's see if that works. So, create. First of all, I want to put wall one here. Display match wall one. Okay, so create a uh, game object, the parent, and call it zoom in object, zoom in o object, object, tag a interactable to it, collider, box collider, and yeah, that will work for now. Just put it here. And also, I want to place a component of zoom in object zoom radio on 5 and I also want to create create you know, pretty quick call it scene manager and pass the interact class okay so let's save this and see if that works click here and we zoomed in but now we can return Oh, and we zoomed again, we zoomed again. Okay, so you see there are some issues that are appearing, and we are to solve them. So we're going to solve them in the next video. Thanks guys for watching, and please remember to like the video and subscribe. See you next time with a more powerful video.